Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. We are going to do an update video on Bitcoin today. Um, as well as Bitcoin, we are going to look at US indices, in particular NASDAQ. So I think it's a pretty interesting time to see what we're going to see here. As you probably all know by now, I am looking at a move down on Bitcoin, being bearish for a long time now. Looking for a minimal move down to 13.5k. Uh, we spoke at length about this target previously. Ultimately, it's, it hits this previous uh, significant high uh, there's some corresponding fibs around this point so i'm not going to go into too much detail about this target we're going to address what we can expect here in the shorter term uh, this is a minimum target could certainly come down lower but typically following a five wave parabolic move in bitcoin all the way to 69k following a parabolic move as such historically it's always retraced between 80 and 90 percent so this is a minimum retracement here to 80 percent being at 13 and a half k so with that said we need to address what exactly is going on here so as you can see we're following a downward pitchfork we've not broken out of that yet we would need to break this upper warning line to break that downward trend um we had not too long ago this wedge shape to the upside obviously broke down out of that but didn't quite take out that low okay so the question is is it making a more complex correction let's zoom in on this so there is the argument you know this is just an initial correction so maybe a w and then we have an x and then we have a y to the upside coming into this horizontal level which is significant you can see this very significant bit of um, support back here we then flagged at this point before breaking it significantly and we might just come back and retest this point so this sits at around 29k so there's an argument that we could potentially come up and tag this point however there's some very key obstacles along the way but I must say, if you were to look at this chart in isolation, just looking at the Bitcoin chart, I would say that that looks like quite a reasonable move up to 29K. But as, as I say, there are obstacles. We're going to address them in detail in this video. In particular, looking over on stocks, which I believe are the driving force behind all of these markets. So really, crypto is a, a derivative market. You know, what happens in stocks, that really demonstrates where, you know, investor sentiment lies. And if they're struggling, it's going to have a knock on effect across all of the assets, in particular on a risky asset such as crypto. OK, so, yeah, we're going to address why I think we've we've met a bit of a resistance, a bit of a ceiling over on stocks and the obstacles we would need to overcome if Bitcoin is to push higher. But ultimately, I am seeing us come down from here. I'm not I don't I'm not too sure we're going to take out this high here at around 25K. All right. So we'll, we'll go into it in detail. But ultimately, I see this as our kind of wedge like correction still following our downward trajectory following this pitchfork and i think we're going to come down further so there's some overhead resistance that we can see here on bitcoin so first thing first and foremost i want to discuss the um let's go on the 200 week simple moving average let's just take off everything else leaving on just the 200 which is this thick black line here so historically always acted as very good resistance resist sorry support back here 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 and then we've come down and tagged it again now historically when it comes down beneath the 200 week you know it only spends a very brief amount of time you know a week or so uh, when it came down here again so again it acted as wonderful support here Again, maybe a week or two just beneath the line and recovered pretty dramatically. But now, for the first time, we're seeing price staying beneath this 200 weeks simple moving average for not a single week, not two weeks, but this is looking like more closer to in excess now, probably over 10 weeks. Okay. So it's looking like we're sticking to the south side of this line. And obviously the 200 week simple moving average has always been historically a very key high time frame indicator. It generally tells you, you know, whether you're in the up cycle or down cycle. Now, the longer we spend beneath this, it's likely we're going to spend a longer time beneath it and continue a strong downward trend. So I've got that fear. Now, for me to flip bullish once more, at the bare minimum, we have to be on the north side of this 200 week simple moving average. OK, I know over the last few days we've had a bit of a dramatic move, in particular this day here on 9th of September which for me this all ties in with a kind of um the dollar having a breather okay so the dollar has been absolutely flying which i think has been the main force bringing these markets down obviously driven by uh, inflation and interest rate hikes um 
but the, the, there was a bit of a cool off period and we'll take a look at the dollar within this video um, and there was a cool off and I'll show you how dollar is now finding support again likely to keep pushing higher and higher through this year in, in my opinion going into the end of the year and I think that's going to continue acting as that driving force downwards so uh, just bringing on the moving average sorry let's take them off for a moment just zooming out and focusing on the 200 week simple moving average just to recap so taking everything else off so yeah as long as we're beneath this line high time frame indicator I would only be considering short positions okay um, all right so that's the first bit of clear resistance and that would come in at around it currently sits at around 23.4k all right that's around about where it sits okay so the other important thing to consider is the camera pivot so um again camera pivots last four years let's just expand this so it's a bit more visible have been really really useful last four years so back in 2018 wonderful support subsequent year of 2019 range between the r4 and r3 subsequently finishing beneath the r3 so the subsequent year you look for resistance at either r3 or r4 you can see r3 came right down where do we find support s3 we then flew the breakout suggested that we're going into a strong uptrend for this year okay so then you would want to assess the following year and see how we close that year and it actually closed strong okay it, it finished strong so the question is are we then to look for support off of the s3 and s4 in this year or is it a termination phase okay so at this point here it came down to the s3 and there was a shout that we could push up from here however the subsequent move up was very very corrective looking three wavish move up and then plowed through the s3 and then i was looking to see would it find support the s4 unfortunately we didn't see that support we actually broke it to the downside and now we've retested it and shot back down okay this is all concerning for me it tells me that this strong finish to the year of 2021 was likely a termination phase in this whole bitcoin move up from the genesis and so the move down which needs to be proportionate and we can expect now likely a close for this year 2022 beneath the s4 of course if we manage to reclaim this s4 that is a fantastic would be a fantastic finish to the year if we can finish above the s4 and that sits at again that very key level of 23.4k or 23.5k in and around that region so very similar position to the 200 week simple moving average so if we can finish the year above that that would be a huge show of strength for Bitcoin and certainly could suggest that we start climbing higher, maybe retesting the all-time highs. However, I'm of the opinion that we finish this year beneath this level. You know, we've already come up correctively in that wedge-like formation into this level and I can't see us just comfortably getting back above. So I mentioned there is a possibility for a complex correction, a first wave, second wave, third wave into 29K. But this is one of the key obstacles here, this S4 resistance. This is one key level it would need to overcome. So we've got that S4 uh, on the weekly camera pivots. Uh, and as well as that, we've got the 200 week simple moving average. So two massive higher time frame indicators that need to be overcome in order to switch bias. OK, so now just running through the other um, camera pivot. So on the daily, we can see here. So each uh, period here represents a month. So for the month of September, we found support off the S3, which really helped with this uh, shoot up to the upside. Uh, but we we failed to get through the r4 and we've been pinned down once more as we've seen today cpi data coming out higher than expected obviously inflation a lot harder to control than anticipated and we're just seeing price come back down as as we can anticipate the dollar rallying further again pushing all such uh, dollar priced assets down so yeah so that's the daily uh here on the here on the four hourly again you can see r3 resistance hitting it to a t today um and just getting plowed straight back down so there's not much more information off of the camera the pivots let's just remove those for now and bring back our annotations with the pitchforks let's zoom out on the daily so yeah um in terms of this chart long-term target 13 and a half k could certainly break through this but it's a very key level we could certainly get a good bounce off of this level hence i'm not getting too greedy about the downside targets but there's some really key and heavy overhead resistance that I'm not too sure we can overcome. So I'm not, although this was a fast move up and pretty aggressive, I would tie that to the fact that the dollar was having a cool off period. 
just kind of take it, coming down a little bit, cooling off, uh, and that allowed you know dollar priced assets to to rally. Okay, but I would when you zoom in on it, if you really zoom in and you look to look at the sub wave counts, okay, yeah, up to here you can argue quite impulsive, corrective, impulsive. What on earth is that? That is not looking impulsive at all. This is all looking like a corrective move. And to be honest, it was only this aggressive aspect that made the thing, the whole thing look arguably impulsive. You know, the speed in which it moved up. If you really break it down, it's all looking rather overlappy, this whole move up from here to here. I personally, I think it's a, a fast paced corrective move. OK, and that is in keeping with this strong aggressive move down to the downside that we've had today obviously triggered by a catalyst but the ta still as i say looking at the prior move to the upside doesn't look too impulsive in my opinion especially this latter stage with the really overlapping waves quite characteristic of a, a corrective move okay so um so yeah with regards to bitcoin as i say we've got our overhead ceiling of around 23.4k is not too high this point here above where we came up to just recently so that's our overhead resistance i'm not too sure we can keep pushing higher of course the elliott wave count here is getting quite ugly i must admit so it's not i wouldn't rely on elliott wave at this point um it's pretty ugly and i would be looking at correlating charts and that's why i would look closely at what's going on in the US indices. So I do want to take a look at those also. But ultimately, still, as the, the main thing I want to get across here is that I've still got the bearish bias. Uh, that is defined by us being beneath the 200 week simple moving average. We're not too far away from that. If we can push back above, there is the argument for this complex correction into 29k up to this point here. Okay, so that's pretty much in a nutshell how uh, I'm looking at Bitcoin for now. But now with that said, let's just take a look at the NASDAQ. Very key, important chart. So uh, I want to look on the weekly, first of all, some very key pitchforks to consider. So let me just bring those up. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so first pitchfork to look at is this one here. So this is our post financial crisis all the way back here, really rallied very hard. And um, yeah, stayed within this pitch for pretty nicely two little blips without outside the lower warning line here. But ultimately, this pitch focus hold the price action really, really nicely. Let's take off this fib for a moment. So as you can see, ranging very nicely between upper warning line, lower warning line. So they are very valuable, these uh, pitchforks, certainly a major aspect to my analysis of the charts. And you can see we're just tinkering on this uh, border here, the lower warning line. Again, when that breaks, it's generally a sign that we're breaking the trend, this upward trend. Of course, we had blips beneath it before and we recovered well. But how long can we keep having these movements down? And as I say, the longer you spend beneath these key lines, the more likely you are to, to stay, you know, in a, a more prolonged downward trend. OK, so that, that's the initial pitchfork for the long term price action. Just wanted to show you in the kind of bottom aspect of this pitchfork to the upside on the higher time frame. So taking that one off, next key pitchfork, this one to the downside. So daily time frame now to look at this a bit closer. So here we're looking at the key waves down. So first major wave, corrective wave, and then we continue down. So uh, first pivot, second, third, following an original pitchfork suggestive of a steep gradient to the downside. Nice test of the lower median line, all the way up, we rallied into the upper warning line, then we've shot down. So you can see we're following this downward pitchfork again quite nicely. Again, for me to be, be more bullish on Bitcoin, I would ideally want to see a break of this pitchfork to the upside. So in keeping with Bitcoin getting above 23.4K, I would want to see NASDAQ break this upper warning line to the upside. So this is another kind of um, point that I would be looking at to flip my bias across uh, stocks and crypto. Uh, so next key pitchfork would be this one. OK, let's take off the other one. So this is just looking at this kind of relief rally to the upside. And also importantly, there's an important fib here. So the fib from high down to low came into the 50% level as well as hitting this shift pitchfork upper warning line. And then we've pinned, been pinned all the way back down. We've rallied from this lower median line into the median line 
yeah the median line always acts as very good support or resistance so here as in this clear resistance and then we've shot back down of course we'd need to break the lower warning line before confirming that this uh, upward trend has finished but considering the fact that we could use Elliott wave here in my opinion all looking very three wave-ish one two three waves to the upside I'm really struggling to see any impulsive count there at all so three wave-ish move corrective bounce hitting the upper warning line of a shift pitch rock into the 50% fib coming down again we're getting rejected that the median line pinning goes back down all looking incredibly weak indeed okay so these are the things that need to change if we are to see further bullish price action on crypto okay so that's this pitchfork and then there was a one more smaller pitchfork to consider so this requires a bit of a further zoom in on the four hourly again just following the downward trend you can see how useful these pitchforks can be so this is a first second third pivot pitchfork here the modified shift was holding the price action very well and you could start to see the loss of momentum to the downside you can see it was uh, just hitting the lower warning line and then you see as it further moves down we're just struggling to hit that lower warning line again that was a loss in momentum of this downward move allowed for this relief rally but only went as high as you can see this upper warning line which is where we've had a strong rejection once more okay so again just to recap cap obviously this was triggered by a catalyst today cpi data coming out higher than expected so inflation is going to be a massive issue okay an absolutely huge issue i'm sure we're all aware of that but it's important to take into consideration the fact that inflation is driving the markets more than anything else so more than the war in well the war in russia is obviously contributing to it with oil prices but this inflation is not just triggered by that that's the important thing to remember you've got to take into consideration what was spent during the pandemic okay the degree of spending and just to put that into perspective um i just want to bring up quickly the dow jones um which really just really summarizes exactly what we're dealing with here so on the dow jones taking off the other annotations taking off the log scale look at this okay so this was when our pandemic occurred okay um so it was april 2020 when we managed to or march 2020 when we rebound we had the rebound okay and this was triggered by stimulus okay a lot and lot of stimulus let's look at the history of the dow jones pretty much coming from zero high being at 36k which we've established not too long ago and pandemic lows 18k we've doubled the value of the entire Dow Jones, the history of the entire Dow Jones, going back as far as, this isn't even the genesis here, but um, yeah, you can see, we're looking at centuries here, doubled the value of the Dow Jones in two years, okay? So from 18 to 36K, we've doubled the value of the entire stock market, okay? And that's all triggered by stimulus. So that is the degree of spending that was involved, okay? That inflation is going to last decades, okay? It's not it's something that's going to be a quick fix with just hiking the interest rates a few percent, okay? It is going to last decades. It's going to be very, it's going to be a real battle. It really is. So that's just really to put it in perspective. This is not just, you know, something that can be corrected overnight. It is going to be around for a long, long time. And yes, the war in Ukraine is going to have an, um, an impact but it's not the main driving force. As we've seen today, CPI data, we were expecting it to come down because obviously oil prices have come down. As a result, CPI has actually gone higher. So clearly, you know, economic analysts don't have a clue what they're looking at. But just coming back to NASDAQ, another very key thing, I want to show you how we are replicating history a little bit here. So weekly time frame, simple moving average. I want to pull up the, just the 200 is necessary here. Um, so very importantly now look at what happened in the financial crisis I'm seeing just almost a mirror image of what happened last time so we've, as far as I'm concerned yes there's lots of different ways you can look at this wave count there's three obvious waves that I see coming down first second third okay yes there's smaller recoveries here one here one here the three classical waves on the same degree I'm looking at a first, second, third. Then we've had a relief rally. I've mentioned earlier that was a 50% relief rally. Where did it come up to? Almost the middle of this range, okay? This this corrective wave here, okay? And also very close to the 200-week simple moving average. Let's go back to the financial crisis. What happened, okay? This is what we're looking at. First, second, third wave down. 
into the 200 week simple moving average, relief rally, where did it come into? The middle of this consolidation phase, so the, that corrective phase. So essentially we've seen three waves down into the 200 week simple moving average, correction into that corrective phase, which is exactly what we've seen with current times. Okay, since then we've come back down and we're, we're kind of like within, uh, it's arguable actually whether we're in this phase right now or this phase, okay? So just coming back to current times. So you can see three waves down, relief rally done, okay, into the middle of this consolidation, you know, into testing the previous range, got rejected. We've had that rally once more, and now it looks like we're just coming back down again. And you can expect next time when we break the 200 weeks simple moving average, as we mentioned earlier in the video, very key high time frame indicator. When that breaks, you can expect investor sentiment to be lost on the macroscopic levels. So this is what happened last time. 200 weeks simple moving average hits, slight recovery bounce. When we came down next time, crisis, absolute crisis, okay? Waterfall moment. So that's what I'm concerned about. And the fact that we've only really gone up here in what looked like a corrective move, let's go on the daily just to appreciate it. As I say, first, second, third wave, all these overlapping waves, very corrective indeed. Um, it's taken off the moving average now. So that concerns me. The moves up are looking very, very corrective. You can argue the moves down are looking corrective also. But I'm just looking at this as the initial corrective move down. So W, yeah, three waves down, W, X, and then we're getting ready for Y. And then that's basically the way I see it happening in, uh, sorry, let's go on the weekly back here also. W, X, and then Y. You can argue if you zoom in, you can call it a ABC, one, two, three, four, five, relief rally. A, uh, so one, two, three, four, five. You can argue ABC if you like, but ultimately you, there's too much resemblance there in my opinion and as i say i've got deep concerns about this coming down further once it, especially once it comes back beneath the 200 weeks of moving average if that happens expect it to be a waterfall moment with price coming down a lot faster other charts to just discuss very quickly we have got the important uh vix just want to demonstrate what i've been focusing on there so i want to bring on our annotations basically Going, looking at the VIX, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's inverse to the S&P index, it's the fear index here. We get these tight ranges that form in these wave uh, wedge-like formations, and then when we start to break them, they really spike hard. And this these spikes to the upside tie in with sell-offs on the S&P 500, okay? So, as you can see, when you start to break these wedges, we have a strong breakout. We had it here, we had it here, uh here once more and this time it's a little bit more congested but we've seen the same kind of play out and i have this wedge here having broken out probably back here so once the wedge breaks we generally don't come down and break these lows again and you can see we're just getting a series of higher lows so low so here we go to low higher low higher low higher low and again this is a higher low yes it did come down quite far almost as far as this low but didn't quite we've recovered so we'll see what happens now. Are we going to continue spiking higher? In which case, we could be close to seeing this kind of price action here on the fear index. Okay, that would tie in with us coming beneath the 200 week simple moving average on the NASDAQ. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that I've just got my eyes on. It is concerning. It could play out that way. All right, so last but not least, just want to take a, t a quick look at the, uh, the dollar index that I mentioned uh, would be useful to look at. So pulling up the dollar here. So we are following an aggressive pitchfork to the upside. Okay, it has been a very sharpish move, but it's expected with the degree of inflation that we can expect. So as I say, I don't see inflation uh, letting up throughout this year. Okay, we'd have to really, really start aggressively hiking rates to turn it around. Yes, we're in the upper parameters of this upper warning line. Coming down to the daily, we can see it a bit better. But um, yeah, we've had a bit of a relief here, but I see this just continue. I think we're just going to keep just hovering around this upper warning line into the end of the year, yeah, at least. Yeah, so that's the kind of play out. We've had that downward move. This is what allowed the stock markets to, you know, gather some uh, pace once more and allow crypto to bounce once more. But now, as I say, with it starting to um, having cooled off, I think we're just going to keep pushing up 
testing this upper warning line into the end of the year. Bit of so it could be a slow burn. Doesn't need to shoot up quite as aggressively as it has done uh, throughout the year. But um, yeah, I, I think we're just going to keep touching on this kind of upper warning line region. Sorry, this pitchfork best seen on the log scale. There we go. Okay, so the pitchfork. It's been adjusted. This pivot here, you can see it's out of place. It's not at the genesis. I'm going to be doing a pitchfork course where I detail all the ways that these pitchforks can be drawn. But essentially, you can see it's holding here the price action best. You know, when I've tried altering the different formations of pitchforks, which don't seem to hold the price action well, that is when you would look to maybe consider adjusting the initial pivot. Um, but yeah, it's at this point you can see the cool off has come into the upper median line, which can act as some support and just take us back into this upper warning line once more. So that, in essence, is what I'm looking at. Expecting a lot more inflation to, to continue, a lot more rate hikes in terms of interest rates. That is going to be pinning stock markets and crypto down. We've spoken about overhead resistance on stocks and crypto. We've spoken about the replication of what we've seen in the financial crisis that we're seeing on the NASDAQ right now. So this is how I'm looking at things right now. Um, and yeah, we'll update as further useful information comes in. There are, other, of course, other catalysts on the horizon. We've got midterm elections in November for the US. We've got for crypto, we've obviously got merge that is on the horizon. In my opinion, these are not the most important factors. Yes, they can be um, positive potentially for stocks, but ultimately inflation is 10 times more powerful having a much greater impact on the markets than these other catalysts of course merge is huge for crypto absolutely massive in my opinion ethereum will one day overtake bitcoin um i think it's got a lot more utility uh, and once it's more scalable which merge will allow i'm very excited about that don't get me wrong and when we see the crypto bounce i will be favoring ethereum but for now, we've got to put things into perspective. The macroscopic uh, outlook across markets, in my opinion, still looking very, very bearish. All right, with that said, for those of you who are interested in furthering your knowledge within trading, I've got all of everything I've learned within trading here packaged into the works. Alternatively, you can look to Cryptology where I do weekly updates covering Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we touch on NASDAQ as well. Um, and that obviously includes my educational material, both the works and the juice, which is like a smaller course here. Um, and so you have access to those courses while subscribed. So click on any of these to get further information if you do are interested in checking them out. So that is if obviously you're interested in assessing the markets uh, independently by yourselves. All right, guys, with that all said, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right, take care.